Hey everybody, Rachel here from RachelTheStamper.com and today I'm going to make a really cool card with the stamp set from the annual catalog called For the Win. This is pretty much going to be a direct case of this. Um, I talked about this recently that I made my niece a birthday card for a friend of hers in school and he really likes soccer so we made his an all soccer card. So you see this one has different sports. Ours is going to be all soccer. Um, we're going to step it up a little bit because we're going to do a little embossing on the uh, Call Me Clover panel. And I'll also show you um, a few other ways that you can jazz it up a little bit differently. I do have a couple of um, fun things to share with you. I did do a little bit of it ahead of time, but for the most part, we're going to make most of the card here. So I am going to go ahead and cut this panel. This is a full sheet of Pool Party. I'm going to go ahead and score it at five and a half. And then I'm going to cut it in half at four and a quarter. Okay, so... I also have a little panel here that I already went and cut. This was from my other card. This is a piece of Call Me Clover. Now you can see this doesn't exactly match because it doesn't go to the end. So what you could do is you could scoot it over a little bit and have a little bit of a frame going around it. Um, if you're more concerned with that you want an exact piece that matches, you could cut a different piece. You could also mirror it to go to the other side. But what you want to do when you cut this panel and I want to show you, just so you know ahead of time, because you do have to cut it a specific way. I cut mine backwards, which is why it looks this way. But essentially, when you're cutting your cardstock, and we're just going to say if this were a half a cardstock, so if this were this half piece here, what you want to do is instead of cutting it this way, you actually want to cut it this way. So if you were to put this panel in this way and cut from corner to corner, then you're going to get a piece that's going to go all the way across. You would just flip it the other way or use the bottom panel. But since I already trimmed this one and just in the sense of not wasting paper, I'm going to use this piece ahead of, anyway, just um, for the sake of saving paper. You can always make it a different way. Now we did do a little bit of um, changing, as I said. I already gave my niece the card, so I don't have it to show you. But what we're going to do is to make this a little more fun, I'm going to run this one through the subtle embossing folder. And of course I did not get that out so I'm going to have to grab that one real quick but I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this in the meantime. I do have a uh, very well loved piece of scrap paper here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the Hip Hip Hooray and we're basically going to stamp it all over the bottom of the card and we are going to stick with Pool Party so it gives a tone on tone look. If you wanted to, and I just kind of started off somewhere random and then went from there. If you wanted to, if you wanted a little bit lighter, you could use Versamark. And I'm kind of just make, taking it a step up everywhere I stamp. And then I'll go down. Fill in the spaces. Kind of filling it in above. And... You can take your little panel just to kind of eyeball where you want to go to. So I'm going to go a little bit higher here. And I'll bring this over just in case, depending on where we decide to set it. You could even, if you wanted to, you could go all the way up. That way you'll see it. And since I have a little border here, I'm going to do it that way. And I'm going to show you what you can do at the top there so you don't get it on the other part of your cardstock. Just for a little cohesion. And I know a couple of these are a little bit off. So now what I'll do is I'm just going to take my scrap paper and kind of put it right at the line here. And that's the fold mark. You could fold it over as well if you wanted to, but... Get that little teeny piece in there. There we go. So for the most part, that's pretty good. Um, so as I said, I did do a little bit of pre stamping for a few of my soccer balls but a couple of them I'm also going to do with you and we're going to also um, heat emboss one other thing as well so I did stamp two soccer balls I actually ended up stamping these uh, believe it or not in gray granite and then I used clear embossing powder to make them shiny so we're going to make one more soccer ball and we're going to also, I'm not sure if I can fit this on one of these pieces. Yeah, we might have to go with the other piece. We're also going to heat emboss the MVP part of the card. So let me just grab this. We'll do our gray granite. 
Um, the MVP, which is the birthday MVP, this is kind of the big statement sentiment. We're going to actually emboss this with um, craft white ink and we're going to use white embossing powder, but we're going to do that on a piece of green. We're also going to stamp the little pennant in pool party. Just trying to find a smaller block in pool party and um, we're going to do clear embossing because it just kind of makes it more fun with the embossing. You know, it, kids love getting cards and they especially love getting something that's got like a little bit of texture to it. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to open up my ink pads. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my uh, heat tool to let it heat up for maximum heat, which basically just means it's going to be done faster. So a couple things, when we use our pigment ink, we don't have to worry about using another ink because pigment ink does stay wet longer. However, we're gonna use Versamark before stamping our other images so they stay wet a little bit longer. And I'm gonna do a couple different um, heat embossings, but I'm gonna use the same coffee filter to catch it just because it's just being simple is what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink up the MVP only in the white craft ink and I'm just gonna stamp this oops I need this out of the way I'm gonna stamp this just down here at the bottom and I want to tell you one other thing and if I can locate it oops that's a little bit off if I can locate it I will show you but I did do one with clear ink and the white and it doesn't turn out as um, bright white as you think it would be so I do like to use white embossing powder along with white ink because it gives a really bright contrast. And we probably could have used our embossing buddy for this, but that's okay. So I'm going to set that on the side. So that was the white. And I'm going to grab my embossing body, embossing buddy for the other one. So this is pool party. So for the pool party, we're doing the win pennant. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp this in Versamark first. Then I'm going to stamp it in pool party ink and stamp on here just like that. And then I'm going to just dump crystal clear or crystal clear or clear <laughs> embossing powder. I'm going to set that on the side. I'm going to keep this out because we're going to do the same thing for the soccer ball. And so I'm just grabbing just a little of my soccer ball. I have my Versamark again. So I'm going Versamark first, then in gray granite. And then same thing again. I'm going to dump the clear embossing powder. All right, let me close these up so I don't have a catastrophe. My heat tool is nice and hot, which means that these images will melt very quickly and it won't warp the paper. So let me just move this over. I'm gonna grab my heat tool and just hold it, move it around while you're doing it. You can see that melts really, really fast. So there's our soccer ball. We'll go ahead and do our pennant next. We did this one with clear. There's our pennant. And last but not least, we will do our white craft ink with white embossing powder. And I should have used my embossing buddy because I have a little smudge on the pee, but that's okay. You can also use this if you need to, to dry your craft ink or your pigment ink. So if you do need to dry it, you could do that as well. So we're gonna let these just set just for a moment. Since I did this one first, I'll go ahead and punch it out. Now, if you want a border around this, you could use your one and three eighth inch punch. So that would give you a little bit bigger border. This one is the one and a quarter inch punch. So I have now three soccer balls and I have my pennant. I'm gonna go ahead and just trim this real quick. I do have some toothpicks for this 
to be able to put it on a pennant I just grabbed a couple out of the kitchen they also do make some flat toothpicks if you want them to not roll around but I didn't have any problem with it moving if we're being honest just trimming this in this was not a whole lot of fussy cutting so if you're concerned with that it really actually was pretty simple just trim this and I just kind of went in close as I could for that. So there's the pennant. And then with the MVP, actually this has a lot of um, straight lines. So it was pretty simple to cut. So that was good. And I probably did more fussy cutting on this than you need to. And I really am hoping that on my desk here, I locate the um, version that I did with just the white ink and I used uh, clear embossing powder because you could definitely tell this one is much more white and bright than that was. So I cut that. Just trim these away. You don't have to do all of this quite honestly, but it kind of does make for a really cool look for your card. Get a little bit closer here. And then on the inside here, what I did was I went in and cut. But again, you don't have to do all this. You can completely leave those letters intact, which I believe is what they did on the sample that they showed. They did leave them intact. So I just get this little bit because Sometimes I choose to be anal about the craziest things. All right, so there's our MVP. We have our soccer balls. We move this out of the way. And then the only thing we have left to do is just to assemble our card. And I still want just to grab the, um, I just want to grab the subtle embossing folder just quickly so I can show you that. So what this does is it kind of just gives like a, a soft feel. It's like a grassy feel, but it looks really cool. So I'm placing this in my embossing folder. This is a thick embossing folder. So when you do this, you want to just use your regular platform, your embossing folder, and just one cutting pad. And you want to send this in so the opening is going into your machine. So you don't want to put the pressure on the bend of that. have one more thing to cut out because we do want to cut our circle so there is that we have our base here I'm gonna go ahead and just fold this just and again I only went all the way up because which you kind of on the edge can't really see it so I guess you could skip that part if you wanted to noticing mine is just the tiniest bit not straight so let me try that again all right so now what I'm gonna do just to have the maneuverability is I'm going to add some liquid glue to this. Let's see where that is. Looks like that might be just a little bit too far down. It's okay. Just wipe that piece off. All right. So there's that. So we have that stepped up a notch because we embossed that. So that looks pretty cool. Now, one other thing we're going to need is our circle. So what I'm going to do is in black ink on a piece of Whisper White, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp. Let me clean this bugger off. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this and then we're gonna die cut it. Make sure you get all that off. And I'm gonna just use um, Memento ink. You could, if you wanted to, use a more pigmenty ink. So you could use Versafine or if you have um, Gina K Amalgam ink. You could use any of those. So I'm going to just stamp this down here at the bottom. I do want to make sure that I have enough room for my circle. So I tend to lay my dies down just to make sure that I have enough room. That looks really good. Let me cover this up. All right, I'm going to cut this one out real quick. And I 
am just using the largest stitched circle and this comes in the stitched shapes. There are four of each. There is a uh, circle, oval, square, and then of course if you want you could get the stitched rectangles because you can make frames with those which is super duper fun. So we have this again that came out of that. So now all we have to do is finish assembling. So what we're going to do is kind of lay out our card, decide where we want it. I do need to locate my toothpicks. I know they're around here somewhere. I have my three soccer balls. We're going to put this on here. And what we could do is we're going to do this just with a little bit of glue. I'm going to go ahead and add that on right now. So I just kind of put a little bit of glue. This glue may be almost empty. It's funny because I say that about every one, but I think for some reason I keep putting them in the different tipsy holders, so I don't know which one is the one that's empty. So I'm just going to lay this on top, just like that, for a moment while you have it setting there. If you're worried about whether or not oops, it's going to move, you could just sit a block on it. That way you know it's going to be in the same spot. So I have my pennant. I'll put one soccer ball here. We'll put one maybe underneath on this side, and then we're going to pop the bottom one up. Now, <clears throat> my friend Donna was kind enough that she sent me a bunch of, oh goodness, I can't remember what these, I think they're called poppets. Gosh, I can't even remember what they're called right now. But basically what you do is, and this, obviously these are larger, they do come smaller. But what you do is you put them onto your... Um, whatever it is you want to pop up. Now these are a little bit big, so I am going to go ahead and trim these down just a smidge. And I just kind of used my scissors and trimmed them by hand. And again, she was nice enough to send me these, so I'm just trimming them. You could buy smaller ones. They're called wobblers. Now that I think about it, I just had a revelation or a relevation if you've ever watched uh, The Good Dinosaur. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim the bottom down. I will tell you one thing. You want to make sure that you have a uh, strong, sharp pair of scissors for these. So you don't also want to use your good scissors to trim these down if these are the only ones you have. Because they definitely have some thick plastic for the bottom part. And also, as you can see, <laughs> mine is not necessarily very circular. But... It works for what we're doing. That's good enough for me. So what I'm going to do is I typically will put, and I'm going to just trim this just a smidgy rounder. I will typically put, um, what I was doing is putting the harder plastic onto the soccer ball, but apparently you can do it the other way, so you don't have to do it that way. Um, I watched one video that said if you do it that way, you'll have a more wobbly wobbler, but um, Donna has assured me you can do it either way. It doesn't make a difference. So I'm going to just put my soccer ball onto this plastic disc and then press just to make sure. And again, since this is kind of going on the bottom, I know you can see this. It would be better if it was smaller, but we're just going with this for now because if you all have stamped with me, you know sometimes good enough is what you get from Rach the Stamper. <laughs> we work with what we have. All right, so what I'm going to do is put this one underneath. And then, where are they? Here's one. Here, and when I found the other thing I wanted to show you, here are here is my um, toothpick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of nip off the sharp end. And that way I have a more of a pennant look. So it's going to be like that. Okay. So what I wanted to show you was, and this is a great way to be able to show you the difference really up close. So this one was stamped with Whisper White ink and clear embossing powder. This one was stamped with Whisper White ink and white embossing powder. So if you want something a little bit lighter, you could go the clear route, but I like the contrast of the bright white. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a few more things and we will finish putting this together. I know I've said that before, but I promise. I'm gonna put one large dimensional and one, oh, that's large too, one small dimensional onto my pennant. Okay. And then I'm going to grab again my liquid glue and I just put just a tiny little bead of glue and I took my 
toothpick and I kind of rolled it to make sure it was covered where I wanted it to be and kind of nested it in. I do want it to stick up just a slight bit. And when I held this the other day, it stayed just the way it was supposed to stay. But basically you want it like that so it sticks up just a little bit. So I'm going to set this here for now. I do need to still take that other one off. This you can either put flat or you can pop it up. Since we're going to have the wobbler, I'm going to just put it flat. So I'm going to put some glue on the back of both of these soccer balls. And on the back of my sentiment. And then just kind of eyeball where I think I want them. So we have one up top, one over here. This guy's going to kind of set on top. Then we're going to have our wobbler that is going to, and I got a little smudge here. He's going to wobble off. So you do have to peel off the bottom sticky. Just like that and he will wobble so you can give him a good press down now that you have everybody kind of where you want them I'm gonna peel off just this little dimensional because the larger one was already on there and then we just kind of put this right like that and there you go super fun card got a little bit of an interactive wobble there which is really fun little glue drop there but lots of different elements a little bit of different dimension you have a lot of shine because you have all that cool embossing powder on there you could always if you wanted to give it like a little spritz with some shimmer spray to finish it off but I think this is a pretty fun card you could obviously swap this out for any of the sports balls in here you could mix it up you could do soccer and basketball and baseball which is the example they showed you could make a golf card with this in look like green in the background which would be really cool um, the other day if you missed it if you go back to Facebook my son did a really cute card and he made a um, really nice trophy with his because he thought that was really fun so stay tuned I will have another video this week and we're going to actually make one with a soccer net. So make sure you stay tuned for that. We did make that card on our live video as well. But I'm going to make a clean and condensed version so you can see it. So I hope you guys love this card. It's really, really fun. And I'm sure all the kids, big and small, in your... Um, family and friends list will love this. I'm going to tell you one other thing I'm going to do just to be sure. And I did this the other day, but I just to make sure I'm going to put just a teeny bit of liquid glue just so my toothpick stays put down. And I'm going to just hold it just for a second. I did forget about that part because I thought it make it made it look much more finished. Plus, it's not going to accidentally pop up and poke anybody in the eye. But great card for all the sports fans in your life. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you need dimensions or measurements or anything, be sure to head over to my blog, which is reachthestamper.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to get any of the supplies to make this card and more, you can go to my online store 24-7, reachthestamper.stampin.net. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.